game coming up. Game three. All right, welcome guys. Game three between Tato and Vinchester. And so far, Tato has been destroying Vinch. Has not even been close. Uh, we have Malians for Tato in the north of the map and the south of the map. We have Vinchester. Vinchester's playing as Celts. Both of these civilizations very strong. We've seen Tato excel with Malians, and we have seen Vinchester excel with Celts. Now in game one, I think it was a mismatch in the civs, but Vinchester tried to go aggressive with an early Imperial Age push. Tato had more economy, more firepower with his civ, and he ended up winning. That one kind of expected midway through that game just because of the way they were playing the civs. Game two, however, everyone was saying, oh, Vinchester, he probably needs to tower rush. He needs to do something different to get a win. And he did go for that tower rush. Tato, he defended brilliantly. And the man in arms destroyed four villagers and an archer. And then the wolves got involved to kill another archer. It just everything went wrong for Vinchester and everything went right for Tato. So this time around, you know, we got to be thinking the same thing. What will Vinchester do? Celts are a great civilization to boom. But we've seen Vinchester go with the tower rush strategy many, many times with the Civ. Tato, he tower rushes himself. And he obviously knows what to do when it's coming. So the scouting is going to be important and the maps will be important with the strategy choices they'll choose. So starting with Vinchester's map, he has his main stone and gold right here above the town center. Really like the position to these. I know that technically they're forward, but there's no way Tato will ever know they're there. So this is always good. He does have a gold in the back of his base and another gold way back here. So three golds within his walls, another one to the north. Also, plenty of space to add town centers. You look at Tato's base. He had an amazing one last time. He's a stone and the gold on the back. And he has a main stone forward and another stone in the back corner. So plenty of stones for Tato, just a little bit of gold. But as you guys know, there's 800 gold a tile, so that even just the main gold will last you quite a while. The other gold's out here. I want to see Vinchester scout really well this game. I want to see him scout. If he sees this stone, I think we'll tower rush, but if he doesn't scout and he goes tower rush, he might tower rush on this side. I think it's important. Tato could certainly tower rush himself. Uh, you never know. The strategy is pretty strong if it's, if you can execute. Yeah, this is Masters of Arena. That's why we're seeing a best of five. This is an arena tournament. Relics are always fair. So on the right, we have two relics for Tato. Um, well, not for Tato, sorry. This one's closer to Tato. This one's closer to Vinchester. And then this one's closer to Vinchester. This one's closer to Tato. And then one right smack in the middle. Very, very fair. The late game. Malians and Celts have fantastic siege. I still think Celts have the best siege in the game. Celts arguably have one of the best booms in the game too because they chop wood so much faster, which means like sooner um, they'll be sooner to town centers, they can add more farms, and ultimately they can get all the resources in they need on that expensive siege. Now the idea behind the tower rush, now I don't know if they're going to do it. If they do, we'll talk about it more in depth, is to just get map control. You get map control, and if you tower rush with any of these civilizations and hold the front, then you can do whatever you want at home, and I think that's really the key. Will you cast CL Dracon game? The CL Dracon game is 7, no, 6 a.m. for me, so I will not. I have community games tomorrow, I think just because of CL's time zone in China, it's been tough for me to cast any of his matches with the way they schedule. He's really the only big set I won't be casting if he continues to, to schedule at that time. If it was a final or something, or, or the semis, then I would probably do it, but not for the stage of the tournament we're currently in. Okay, guys, Vinchester's going to click up the feudal. Now, his score drops. You see that. His score just went down 100. Let's see what Tato does. Last time, Tato noticed the score drop, and then he clicked feudal himself to defend from the tower rush. Does he get loom now? Yes. See? I'm 100% certain that what happens is Tato watches the score to know his opponent is tower rushing. This has happened twice now between Tato and Vinchester, and 
This has happened many times before with Vinchester versus other opponents. So Tato recognizing the, the score is dropped, uh, knows the tower rush is going to be coming forwards. These villagers are going to do the same thing every time, guys. Builds the barracks on the way there, builds the tower then, and then builds an archery range. Last time, Tato went for man-at-arms to defend from it. And I want to point out that Vinchester did scout the stone, so he knows where to build the first tower. Very, very smart thinking. This time around, Tato has not built a barracks, so he will not be going man-at-arms. And that was what hurt Vinchester last game. That was what really lost in the game. He didn't expect that. Plush Werewolf, hopefully we can get you in a community game soon. Hopefully. Uh, we're doing community games all day tomorrow, so if you're busy, you're working, I'm going to be streaming for eight hours. official, how was your weekend? I'm doing great. I love your videos on YouTube. Cool man fight. My weekend was great, man. I got to go visit my brother, see a concert with friends. It was a good time. Glad to be back to work, though. Actually, I, I streamed on the weekends. Monday and Tuesday is my weekend, so I'm, I'm glad to be back. Itato built a house here. I think he just wants to block his opponent from getting in. Itato is going to now build his defensive tower, and he's going to need to go to stone. He's already done so. So while Tato's building defensive towers, I think this has gone well for Vinchester. Again, it's not about killing your opponent with these arena tower rushes. It's so weird, I know. But it's about holding the front and holding map control. Now, the other thing is, is idle time. This is a strategy that's somewhat complicated, while it looks really, really simple. Vinchester sends archers into his towers, while Tato, he's going to have to put villagers in the towers for these tower fights. And that means idle time for Tato. It's a next level strategy, that's for sure. But it's always tough when your opponent knows it's coming. The Tato's tower placement was perfect because it can he can focus on these villagers. Now, this wall is going to be taken down anyhow. 900 HP on these walls, which is why the meta has changed and we see a lot more tower rushing. Only goes up to 1800 HP in Castle Age. So Vinch will probably want to run through here anyhow. I know Vinchester very well. <laughs> And uh, this is a risk. And oh, he's going to try and batter this down. He's going to try and batter this tower down. Because why not? What is there to stop him? He has archers. Tata does not have archers. Now, Vinchester, he needs to be careful with his archers. He just lost one there. Tata could build another defensive tower. And he's doing so. But can Vinch take this out? The archer's coming over. Can delay Tato. This tower is going to go down. Let's see. Can Vinchester be stubborn here on the front? Uh, he's now deciding to run away. Lots of weak units. Tato getting the tower up. He's going to build yet another watchtower. And yes, these villagers are not in range. So that is perfectly fine. I think Tato is in a position he didn't want to be in. Last game was the absolute best scenario. That's rare. Finchester's doing everything he would want. Slowly, he adds economy at home. Tato's a lot more idle time. And Tato's economy is not booming up like last time. Finchester gonna try and batter through the houses now. And he's gonna try and continue to hold map control and work his way around. And I'll remind you, Tato does not have anything to put in his towers except villagers. So if he goes for defensive units, it will mean idle time for his economy. Yeah. Finchester finally has gotten what he wanted. Tato's doing everything he should do, though. He's gone for skirmishers. Skirmishers were counted to archers. He's building defensive towers. Now, I think once he gets this tower up, Vinchester will not be able to go anywhere. It's just a very deceiving strategy choice because you don't account for the idle time. You think, okay, I have towers up. This is fine. Everything's looking good. But it, it's just the idle time in the end. And Vinch is going to have to delete this tower and rebuild it somewhere. Okay, he's going to take this stone on the front. So yeah, let's look at the economy difference. Look at the food count for Vinchester. Did I tell you this guy was good at this or what? 500 food, 195 gold. No idle time back at home for him. Tato, he has 150 food. And this is why this strategy is so strong. It's incredible. Which I think a smart move for Vinchester would be to 
build a few more towers on the front. He only has two right now. Tato looks to me like he wants to build a tower on this stone and push Vinchester off of it. Yes, he's going to build this tower here. Vinchester repairing this one so he doesn't lose the tower war. And Vinchester not seeing this tower or not reacting to the fact Tato is building it. Which means he will get pushed off this stone. But Tato leads in Vil count. He does, but that's because Vinchester got wheelbarrow. I don't think Tato did. So when you get wheelbarrow, it idles your town center for about the time it would take to create four villagers. So I think that while Tato has more villagers, has he had efficient economy? Tato has had more idle time, which basically means he's had less villagers working for him. So I think this is exactly what Vinchester would want. I'm not saying that Tato's not in a position to come back in this game or a position to win this game, but after watching uh, just Vinchester getting destroyed two games in a row, this is finally a close game, and this is going to be fun to watch. Yeah, there's Tato's wheelbarrow, so we'll see the difference. Wolfpack, thank you for the five months of support, man. Less than three to you as well. Finchester on the way up. He did take a loss here. It was a nice pickoff from Tato's scout on that weak vill. And that'll mean Tato will take this tower down. But what's Finch going to do now? He'll be close to having the stone. He will need to build a castle in the next age. Now, the crazy thing is, what Finch likes to do is not continue to be aggressive after this. He likes to build a castle at home and add town centers. He uses a very aggressive strategy to get some form of eco lead, which is weird. Now he sent this villager forward just in the nick of time getting here as well so he could repair this tower. And Vinchester's trying to get in the tower, that's why you hear that noise. He can't he can't fit yet. <laughs> he keeps trying. He should be able to get in now. Yeah, there we go. And Tato has his own archers. He created archers just to put them in that tower. And he's on his way to castle too. So yeah, Vinch is going to hit castle a minute faster. Has some nice map control. Well, let's talk about the save advantages now. Malians, well, they save what on everything they build. So that's already been paying off for Tato. Tato might go elite skirmisher because elite skirmishers can fight underneath towers. And they might try and pick off some bills. What does Vinchester get in the castle age? Well... Normally on arena, you're seeing a lot of Maganels and a lot of siege, so he could easily add a siege workshop Also for what it's worth he could actually build that castle and go for world raiders It'd be very rare, but he could go for world raiders uh, To kill the Skirmishers if Tato goes for that. I think a wiser move for Tato would be to go for crossbow And he's gonna need his own siege workshop to push out Now Tato He's able to kill that villager repairing. Going to kill this tower then. Um, another villager forward for Vinchester. Surprise, surprise. What was sending the females? Man, why are you sending the females into the line of fire and letting the men at home? That's so sexist, Vinchester. Uh, there's a siege workshop for him. Well, let's look at the economy differences. Second town center now for Vinchester. And that's it. Has the stone for a castle if he wants to build it. Don't know where he will build that just yet. Tato getting Bodkin Arrow and Crossbow. And now would probably be the time for Tato to push out. You know, try and run out here and see what's going on. He does not know about that Siege Workshop, though he probably expects it. He's also adding two more Town Centers. So there's definitely a slight build lead for Tato now. I think because he has so much food floating as well with these extra TCs, he's going to even grow in the build lead. His issue for him will be lack of map control, so that's going to be his focus now. Vinchester's going to work on holding that. Now, you see what both players see right now. These two golds. Tato has one gold in his base. So if Tato doesn't get map control back, he will not be able to get these golds. And you know what? Vinch hasn't built the castle yet. It would be a ballsy move, but I think he could build the castle here. Look at his scouting. He sees two four-tile golds. He sees this neutral gold. So he knows that Tato, and well, I guess he doesn't see this neutral gold in the back of his base, but he knows that Tato won't have a lot of gold. 
and that's why his archers are here. It's just such a risk because, you know, for all he knows, Tato could send the crossbows over here. Tato could have knights. You know, there's there's options available to Tato. So Vinchester doesn't know what we know, and I doubt he'll risk a castle forward. Oh, a siege tower from Tato! A siege tower from Tato! I didn't even see that. Vinchester knows it's coming because he had the spear there. Can he quick wall it? Oh my god! Oh my god! Look at this! That's incredible! I've never seen this yet with the siege tower. The quick wall? No! No! He forgot that area! Oh, you've got to be kidding me! You've got to be kidding me! Oh, this is devastating! This is devastating! That was a sick move from Vinchester, but he forgot about the one house! And now Tato can do so much damage! 56 villagers! 58 villagers now for Tato! He's killing villagers from Vinchester! Tato's gotten that map control back, the great equalizer, the siege towers worked out, and Tato's gonna micro away from the Maganel as he tries to kill the archers and the villagers. Oh, that's so good for Tato. That was sick, though. That was so sick. I've never seen someone... I, mean, I know he failed, but... Never seen someone able to scout the siege tower coming so early and go for that. And Tato is going to lose his crossbows now to the conversions. But wow. Now look at the eco difference. Talk about idle time. So much idle time there for Vinchester. Well played from Tato. And now he's adding the stables. Tato's doing everything right. He is doing everything right. If he adds some form of melee unit, he can kill monks and he can kill the Maganels. How much you want to bet Vinchester's building a castle forward now? He is going to build it forward. That was crazy. I can't get over that. I can't get over that. He would have been able to house wall at all, I think. Because Tato went the whole way over here, thinking, okay, I'll be fine, but Vinchester was able to get the houses up. Can't believe that's so unfortunate he forgot that house. You know, for him, he still saw the foundation, so he probably thought he got a touch on it to block. Does Tato see the forward castle? He does. And, oh boy. Two Magnels. Light Kev on the way for Tato. These villagers are so exposed. The monks are going down. But Vinchester at the same time using his one Maganel. And he's gone two for one. So his castle will still go up. Epic play from both players. Tato killing two monks and a Maganel. Not enough. X-King donates 100 bits. He says, hey T90 here from YouTube. Glad to finally catch you live. Thank you for the 100 bits, man. I appreciate that. This is pretty awesome game. It's definitely the best game of the series so far. Tato's issue is that he doesn't have these golds. Beyond that, I'd say it's a little bit iffy for him that he doesn't have the front, but there's nothing that he would really want out there. I think if he's going to build his castle, and it looks like he will, he needs to maybe think about building it out here. Because he's going to click Imp soon, and he's going to go towards the Imperial Age. But he's running low on that gold. Vinchester got the map control he so badly wanted. Vinchester has the Celt option, so the longer this game goes, I think Celts have the advantage. And uh, Vinchester is picking up some relics now and camping the other ones with his light cav. And also, the scout and light cav he has here watching these golds. Tatch is on the way to Imp. What will he do? Malians have great infantry, but so do Celts. Malians have great siege, but so do Celts. But Tato has the eco lead. So is he gonna go Cavalier? I mean, Tato can go Cavalier. That's strong as well for this Civ. Malians do so much very well, but Celts will have the counters. An Imp. I think it's important for Vinchester to think about sending a scout in here to see what's going on. At the moment, he can see the light cav and the knights, and maybe he can see what upgrades are on them. That can be important, but if he if he scouts that Tato, going to be in trouble. Vinch is on the way to Imp now as well, uh, adding wood raiders. Uh, these <laughs> these forward villagers are chopping wood here. Uh, we could lose some of these. And he will lose some of these because he's choosing to fight. I cannot stress enough the importance of these resources here. It is so big. Tato has gone to Imp before securing that. 
in the hopes that he can push in the Imperial Age, maybe with some trebuchets, and take this castle out. I'm still not completely sure what Vinchester will be going for, but he will have the stone for a second castle shortly. He needs to make sure he saves some stone because Tato can go for trebuchets, and he's going to need to repair this. Oh, Vinci just bought the stone. He's building the next castle here. So he wants to hold the front. He has the speed of the World Raiders. He has the monk here camping this. That way, anytime Tato moves out, Tato's at risk of losing villagers. Cavalier immediately for Tato and Imp. He doesn't have a lot of them. And what resource is he lacking? Gold. He is lacking the gold. Wouldn't surprise me to see Tato selling this stone because he probably doesn't need multiple castles. If he does so, and he doesn't push this back, he's completely out of stone because that stone is still underneath Binchester's castle. But man, what a game. Finch is such a good player in these situations. He's behind an economy, but he has that map control. Finchester has better micro than Tato, in my opinion. They both are amazing. So we'll get to see that come into play as well. Okay, these Maganels from Vinchester are going to sneak out. Tato's like, oh no, I need to repair this trebuchet. I can't throw that away. And luckily for Tato, he's able to get there in time. But that means Vinchester sees the Cavalier. He's definitely going to see it on the left-hand side of his castles now. Is he going for a Wode Raider? Elite Wode Raider? Feels like Elite Wode Raider. If he was going to go for... Yep, there we go. If he was going to go for Halberdier, he would have clicked that already. Elite Wodes are important. To get numbers of... You need a lot of numbers of Wode Raiders. They're fast. I don't know if they can deal with Firmba Cavalier, though. And here we go. Tata pushing out to the gold. Oh, man. The trebuchets are exposed here for Tato, though. They are exposed. The Elite Wodes will kill these trebs. Tato's going to lose three trebuchets as he moves out to that gold. That's a big loss for Tato. And, oh, can Vinch keep this castle up? <gasps> so close. Oh, so close. But he's just kept the castle up. So that means two castles for Vinchester. Possibly more because he has the stone secured. He's researching pikemen now. His focus will likely shift over to the left-hand side where Tato's building his next castle. Wow, what a game. We all know what's going on. Tato needs to get the gold. Vinch needs to, to keep him from getting that safely, and he needs to get the counters. Pikeman on the way. With Pikeman and Wode Raider, it's going to be tough for Tato to do this with Cavalier. But Vinch saw the castle going up. Gonna pack up this trebuchet, just move it on over to the left. Oh, wait, hold on. Oh, oh, this is this is a mistake. He's gonna lose his trebuchet. I think so anyway. It's gonna be very close to going down. Meanwhile, he pushed out to the castle. The castle's finally up for Tato. Vinch has to run away. Is this gonna go down? Yeah, it's gonna die to a light cav and some crossbows. That's sloppy from Vinchester. He would have been better off pushing it to the left. Now, one thing I'll say is that Tato has a little bit more mobility. Just lost his town center, but he has a little bit more mobility with the Cavalier. A Kelt, they can get that death ball rolling, but it quite literally needs to be a ball. <laughs> like, if this map was a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, <laughs> Vinchester would, would want a big glob of peanut butter right in one spot. And Tato would want his uh, peanut butter nicely spread around the bread, around the map. And Vinchester doesn't want to give Tato time to spread his peanut butter. Jeez, I'm so weird. I'm so weird. I'm sorry. But it it, you, it makes sense. It makes sense, I hope. Vinch is going to lose this castle. Vinch can't decide where to fight. Does he try and take Tato's gold away? Well, that's a great idea, but then he's going to lose his own castles. And he needs his own castles, badly, for the Wold Raiders. He's just forgotten about these. Now, Gebetto's on the way in from Tattoo. He's gonna try and snipe the trebuchets. He has not been able to do that here. That's a slick idea from Tattoo to try and save his castle that way. Hand cannons on the way for Tattoo. Hand cannons will counter all of this infantry. That's the one thing that Vinch has, is really unable to account for is the hand cannon choice. And now he's going to lose the trebuchets. 
Well, at least he was close to losing the trebuchets. Instead, Tato using the Bombard Cannon. We'll probably lose the Bombard Cannon now. Tato wants to use the Cavalier sparingly. Masto's hand cannon's behind. I think it's just down to stalling now for Tato. He killed more trebuchets. He's already killed the castles. He needs to give himself time. He has the gold. And currently, he has the counters. I think this is where he can turn around and fight. With Vinch running away. You know, Celts can counter the infantry. Um, they can counter the hand cannons and the gunpowder from Malians, but you need to have everything available. The problem is, World Raiders are expensive, Halberdiers are expensive. To go Onager now to counter the hand cannons would not really be feasible for Vinch. That's what he would need. Now, this castle is interesting because Vinchester can send his siege beneath the castle now. That's a lot of hand cannons. I don't think Vinch can afford to fight this. Vinchester has four relics. He does see... Oh my goodness. He doesn't see these golds. How did he not scout those golds? I talked about the importance of scouting in every game this series, especially this one there. Now he sees them, luckily. Can Vinchester have the time? Can he push this? This fight's so close. I can make an argument for either combination here. You have the Halbs versus the Cavalier, but then you have the Hand Cannons versus the Halberdiers and the Wodes. But the thing about the Wode Riders are they attack so fast, they move so fast. All Vinchester needs to do is take Tattoo off this gold, so he's going to send the Trebuchets forward, sacrifice some army numbers so he can kill the castle. He's going to kill the castle. And now these villagers are exposed for Tattoo. Wow, look at the score. It's so close. The power of the World Rider is really coming into play. Tato's trebuchet is probably going to die here. Now, Vinchester's lost a lot of his numbers, but I'd say that's well worth it. Tato doesn't have any Cavalier left. He's going to be fighting the counters. The Halberdiers, so the Cavalier will die. It's just the hand cannons remaining. And now these villagers are dying left and right. Vinchester takes the score lead. Vinchester takes the economy lead. 30 population more for him. And while Tato tried to hold, he couldn't take that one big fight versus Celts. Celts are so good at clumped up situations. And Tato's going to call the GG. That's the game winning fight. Vinchester wins the game. And wow. You know, I said it. I think Vinchester knew all along he needed to hold this gold. It was very tough for even me to say what Vinchester should have prioritized on. Because the minute he did push to this gold, he lost his castles. But uh, I think it just came down to the fact that. He had that map control early. He was completely safe at home. I mean, that siege tower was epic, but he was completely safe at home uh, for the most part. And he was very easy for Vinchester to know where to apply focus. The entire time we knew what Vinchester was trying to do, Tato the entire time was trying to hold and push back. And I think it all stemmed from the tower rush. Because these castles on the front were only possible because of those few towers in the beginning. Those castles stayed up till M. So that's what why Vinchester does that strategy. And uh, Tato, while he he was actually ahead in Eco, he couldn't do anything to stop it. So we're gonna see game four now. Now, YouTube, say hello to Twitch. That one's definitely going to YouTube at some point. I've switched up how I'm doing things with uploads, so I might not upload this entire series. If you want to see the rest of the games or the games you missed earlier, you can t uh, click the VOD in the YouTube description. I'm going to do an update video, everybody, on that. On how I'm going to be running the channel, because I'm changing things up. But more on that in the future. Here's the eco stats. we got to get into the next game. Awesome. So I, gif I, I gifted. I missed some things. And Snape's gifted a sub to MBL. MBL, welcome. Thank you for the four months now. I think I gave shoutouts to everybody else. Oh, there was actually... Another 100 bits from King Henry during the big fights. He says, these bits are because you reminds me of myself. I'm 23 and I have loved Age of Empires 2 since it came out. And I'm from Harrisburg, PA. Whoa, really? You're from PA? Wow. Yeah, that's 20 minutes away from me. Poof. That was epic. That was epic. Game, game 1 and 2 is just baiting us into thinking it was going to be a dumb series. Or boring series. Now game four, as you can see on the main overlay, 